Research into digital technology in mental health care has shown positive results. Using digital technology alongside existing psychological therapies has proven to be an effective way of treating a whole range of mental health conditions. Psychologists have worked quite hard in recent years to try and capitalise on the digital revolution. Um, and uh, psychotherapy is all about learning new skills. Um, and of course, um, normally when we're teaching people, we don't just do it through a conversation. Um, but psychotherapy has often traditionally just been done through a conversation. So the digital world really allows us to look at other ways of helping people learn things. And so you can put a lot of the key ideas that you want to convey in a psychological therapy um, into an internet program and allow people to study those in their own time, because the internet never closes. What digital technologies are the NHS investing in? Well, the NHS is really working hard to deliver new digital technologies to work for patients. One really exciting initiative is called the Global Digital Exemplar Programme and through this a small number of NHS organisations are working together to deliver really exceptional care through the use of world-class digital technology and innovation. And one really important thing is that we're not only delivering innovative projects but we're also writing them up so other NHS colleagues across the country can really adopt them easily and we're calling these blueprints and there's now over a hundred of these blueprints openly available on the web. In mental health in particular, we've got a lot to do uh, to improve our electronic care records, to share them securely, to use the data from them using analytics and to invest in software. But there's also quite a lot of digital technology which patients can use themselves to really be a full partner in their own care. So we need to focus just on those programmes that are really engaging um, and also that deliver the right sort of content. So IAPT is all about delivering nice recommended psychological treatments. So it is really important that any uh, internet treatment that we bring into IAPT has the, has the content in, aligned with nice. Um, it also of course has to meet all of the sort of data security uh, requirements of the NHS and has to make sure that our patients data is absolutely secure at all times. Support Hope and Recovery Online Network, Sharon, is a peer support service that provides the opportunity for individuals to come together and share their experiences. It works in much the same way as popular social media sites, with users supporting each other by writing blogs and sharing posts. Users report that speaking to others who have gone through similar experiences helps them feel less alone. In a world where people can often feel isolated with their mental health, sites like Sharon can bring people together to share their experiences with each other. For some people, um, coming forward for face-to-face -face therapy is quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. If you take one of the conditions we're very interested in, um, social anxiety, um, for someone with severe social anxiety, actually meeting a stranger for the first time, a therapist, is very threatening. And so for some of the more severe people, actually they can get going on the internet and start overcoming their fears, um, even if coming in for regular appointments might seem too much of a challenge. So that's one of the advantages. Hi Emily, welcome to session two for today. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to spend a bit of time, first of all, just going through the homework review from last week. Um, and then we'll come into talking a little bit more about CBT and what we can do in terms of helping you there with the difficulties that you've been experiencing. By offering digital consultations, we are able to offer more choice to our patients. This is particularly useful for patients who struggle to attend appointments, whether that be due to a long-term health condition or perhaps work commitments. It allows them the opportunity to still have face-to-face -face therapy, but just done in a different way. Using avatars to communicate has shown to be an effective therapeutic tool for both users and clinicians. By creating an avatar, users can immerse themselves into an online world where they can express themselves in a way that they might not be able to do in everyday life. By creating a visual representation of how they feel or how they experience a situation, users and therapists can explore different perspectives in a safe and secure environment. The evidence shows that people are able to talk about things that they might find difficult to discuss in a face-to-face -face situation. 
So what I've found when I'm working with young people is that they can orientate this program so much better than older <laughs> mental health practitioners because they are very used to this type of format and this type of platform as well. Um, so you can be, you can move um, all the characters around. You can also move them by using this here. You can have different perspectives and all of these are really helpful tools in making this young person think of things from a different perspective and um, reflect differently on a situation that they may have been stuck in for quite a long time. It can be used as a way for the young person to process some difficult and challenging issues that they're going through. So during using the program, this is what's allowing them to process and reflect. They themselves are very surprised of where this program could take them and reflect on things that they didn't even know that they were keeping in their mind or thoughts. Um, symbols have also been very, very effective in, in, in fam especially with family dynamics and, and showing different um, strengths and weaknesses in relationships within families. What I've noticed when I'm doing sessions with young people, it's very different to the face-to-face -face interaction in that they, it's better not to interrupt that young person. Um, I found that ProReal really is a way that the young person can carry on that thought process without a, a mental health practitioner reflecting too much and interrupting that process for the young person so eventually they found their own answers. Well, the young people's feedback has been really positive in that they've always wanted to use it again. Once I've used, introduced it in a session, they really want to use it in the next session. Another advantage is that you know, the, the programs store everything that you, that you do. Um, one of the things that um, happens with normal psychotherapy sessions is that we forget quite a lot of the things that happen mm -hmm. in a session. Um, if, if you test patients who've seen their GP and ask, ask them to you know, tell you what was covered in a 10 minute consultation with a GP, just 15 minutes later they've forgotten half of it. And if you've done some wonderful things in a psychotherapy session, um, and, but a lot of it is forgotten afterwards, it can't have so much impact. But the internet program stores everything that you've done, all the work you've done, so you can always go back at it and look at it. So that could help sort of deepen learning. Online CBT programs allow patients to undergo treatment any time of the day or night and can be tailored to particular needs. You can work through a range of modules at your own pace, leaving comments and questions to be reviewed by your therapist. The program allows users to revisit work they have already completed. This helps them to practice strategies and techniques so that they can use them more effectively. Online CBT programs can help to treat a number of difficulties, such as depression and a range of anxiety disorders. Phobias especially fear of heights, can be debilitating. VR is currently helping people to tackle their fears. So, Polly, can you tell me a little bit about virtual reality? Virtual reality is a completely immersive experience. People wear a headset, they often have two hand controllers as well, and what happens is when they have that headset on and the controllers, is their movement is completely tracked. So they can move within a 360 degree space and what they see on their headset corresponds with that and it's as if the environment was really real. What would you say is sort of some of the sort of key sort of advantages of, of using VR as opposed to um, traditional sort of CBT methods? So VR really allows the person to, to be in a situation that feels very real. You know, when you put on that headset and you're in that atrium on the fifth story of a building, it feels very real and um, you wouldn't want to step off an edge. The beauty of it is that it, in the back of our minds, we know that it's not real. So therefore we feel a bit more willing to perhaps take risks or do things that we wouldn't do in the real world. You can go out on an extendable platform into the atrium space and pick apples off a tree. And that's something that you'd never do in the real world, it wouldn't be safe to and we wouldn't want someone to be able to do that. But in the virtual world it's something that you know nothing bad can happen to you, you can't fall over or fall off. Um, and it really allows people to to challenge themselves and to, to help learn to, or to help teach them ways of managing with their anxiety and doing things that they otherwise thought weren't possible. And then when they go to the real world and are faced with 
a situation not quite as extreme as that, but one nonetheless that triggers the same thoughts. They're able to draw upon their previous experience in the virtual world and use that to help overcome what they're facing in the real world. So the first session I was talked through it and I was told I was in control and I could stop at any moment. And as soon as I got the headset on, I was really surprised at how real it seemed. And just getting in the lift and moving up the lift, I felt unsteady and uh, a bit anxious. And so it went on when I came out on the balcony and had to look around me. It really felt like, a, it's, well, I started to get the symptoms that I get when I'm suffering from, from um, fear of heights, for example, when I'm driving over bridges or in high places. It just felt exactly the same. I felt sweaty palms and I felt I just wanted to get out of there. I just wanted to escape. And on the first session, I think I was able to stay in the system for as, just about as long as, um, as I was asked to. But afterwards, I actually felt quite emotional and, and kind of shaky and um, quite upset in some ways. I think it, it really seemed like, why am I feeling this? I feel so stupid, but I also feel so anxious. And I felt, um, I felt I'd been put in danger. And yet in my head, well, I knew I was in a room with my feet on the floor. There was no danger at all, but it still recreated all those, those feelings because although I could see it wasn't reality, it certainly felt like it. And so bit by bit, I started to feel more confident and proud of myself really for facing the scary thing, even though it wasn't dangerous. Um, and then the advice I was given, which was to practice outside in real situations, um, I was able to then to, to use the similar strategies and also to kind of measure a little bit how well I was doing compared with the option of actually somebody taking me up into a real shopping centre. It felt in some ways much safer but in some ways absolutely the same so I think it, it's an amazing resource and I can imagine how well it'll work for, for lots of other uh, phobias and there's no reason why it couldn't work for, for many many people who have slightly irrational phobias uh, and for me I say it's just amazing I was astonished by how well it worked what areas is, is virtual reality available for and what difficulties could it support people with? So what we're really wanting to focus on are the problems that we know are really debilitating. They can be quite difficult to treat and we hope VR is a, can provide a, a kind of adjunct to existing therapy in the hope that it will help enhance some of the outcomes. I think it's often assumed that it's going to be the young people that are coming forward for this but in the trial we had someone in their 80s and, and I think services where we are at the moment have seemed similar. You know, people of all ages come in, no prior experience of VR or technology is necessary. It's very intuitive, it's very easy to pick up. Um, but it's something that excites people, you know, um, grandparents who, for example, aren't so familiar with it, they tell their grandchildren and they're excited. We had parents come into the trial and they really want, they were really envious and, and wanted to come and see what was going on. So it's something that, that does excite people and, and what we found is people are coming for VR therapy when they wouldn't have otherwise sought any therapy at all. There are many different applications for this, but we know, for example, that in this country and in most places across Europe, Europe, there just aren't enough psychological therapists and we probably just can't keep a pace with training enough people to do face-to-face -face therapy. So by introducing technology in, um, we can have lots of different people treated at scale. So in for different disorders, but in places where there just aren't enough psychological therapists, we can use virtual reality in this way and um, treat people very effectively. The NHS has developed a library of evidence-based apps, which include mental health apps, most of which are free to download. These apps have been developed by the NHS or assessed against a range of NHS standards. To find out more, visit the app library. How do you see 
digital interventions and computerised programmes sort of evolving, particularly within an IAP setting? Um, well, I, I think over time um, we're probably going to be able to offer as a sort of uh, choice option a good internet treatment for most of the clinical conditions we cover in IAPT. At the moment that's not true, we only have them for a subset of conditions, mm. but I think the research will make good programs available across the board. These are just some of the new digital treatments available, with many others currently being researched. In the links below this film, you can find out more information.